Hello everyone, inside today's Locked On Canadians, we're going to discuss what the Habs should do if they pick Shane Wright first overall, what the Habs should do if they pick Yurov Slavkovsky second, first overall, not second overall, <laughs> and what are we going to do if the Montreal Canadiens trade Josh Anderson and end up with another top 15 draft pick? All that and more coming up in today's show. For Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 642 of Locked On Canadians. As always, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. If you are listening wherever you get your podcast, we are free and available there. Or if you are watching our tired, shining faces on YouTube, thank you so much. We're closing in on 1,200 subscribers and more. Uh, we can hit 1,500 before the draft. I won't promise a food stunt because we haven't figured out our 1,000 subscriber one yet, but we'll do something at some point, maybe. And I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matlin. I'm joined, as always, by the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, we're going to talk Shane Wright and Slefkovsky again, but not in the debating uh, sense of should the Canadians pick them or pick one or the other. We're going to figure out what to do with the second half of the draft if they do pick one or the other. But first, how are you doing? The weather is rapidly getting disgustingly hot and humid in Buffalo again, and I don't know if that bids or bodes well for Montreal as well. It's currently pretty cool. It's going to be hot and humid and rainy tomorrow, and then we're having a couple of really hot thunderstormy days. But here's what I'm going to say is that I still haven't done my food stunt for when we hit 500 YouTube subscribers. I want you all to know that I never forget these things. We always pay our debts, just like Lannisters do. Um, and French has released a ketchup popsicle, so I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do because it's sufficiently gross and disgusting and food stunty, but also is it like a giant bowl of something? Uh, so all those in favor of me trying to track down this ketchup popsicle and eating it on, on video, uh, please send us your emails, comments, tweets, whatever. If, if, if the audience is okay with that being my food stunt, uh, that is what I will do. I will try and track down this horrifying ketchup sickle and I will <laughs> and I will eat it uh just a note I don't like ketchup I don't like ketchup chips I don't like ketchup anythings I like on my fries I will just have salt or something else I'm not a ketchup person uh this is going to be a particularly uh thorough challenge but another thing is that people keep asking us why do you keep talking about Shane Wright versus yourself you're right you're uh Slavkov Slavkovsky I keep Doing this, and, and he's going to get picked because I can't pronounce his name. That's what's going to happen. Um, we found a new angle to do it, and we're not milking this. We're saying we're going to do hypotheticals. What will the Canadians do in, later in that first round if they pick one or if they pick the other? So we aren't making a decision or a debate on either one. We're considering both possibilities. And quite frankly, I'm excited. So am I. Uh, also, they should take Shane Wright. It's the right pick, and I will die <laughs> on this hill. I will turn this ant hill into, or I will turn this mole hill into a mountain because I am that petty. But I, I this kind of came to me as I was driving home because I was thinking about what can we talk about today that isn't, you know, Simon Nemitz's agent potentially talking to Slavkovsky's agent who talked to a polar bear who delivered the mail to Antarctica and then a penguin talked to Jean Perron. And now we, anyways. That's all nonsense that we are not getting into because I don't have the brain power, the willpower, or the energy to be that mad about it. My thought was, if the Montreal Canadiens select Shane Wright, what should the Habs do with the 26th and 33rd overall picks that they possess? In this scenario, right now laying out some of the ground rules, they are not trading up. That will be our third segment. We have thought of that. Don't worry. And my biggest thought is that they are picking Shane Wright first overall – they have two, potentially three big options at the end of round one. At the beginning of round two is that there are wingers available. There are centers available. And you can really, you know, score a nice center depth there with someone like an Owen Beck, maybe if that's what you're considering. Or 
you can see if a defenseman has fallen, a Seamus Casey, a Isaiah George, uh, Noah Warren, if you want to take a little bit of a reach there. And I'm leaning towards maybe taking one of the wingers who falls down there. We've talked about Ivan Miro Shenachenko before. He had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and is going to miss mo- part of the series, just getting back to training. And my thought is if he falls because people have concerns about Russia, found it or not, or his health, which he's expected to make a full recovery, that's a slam dunk at the end of round one there. You get a high skill winger and you get Shane Wright. But I'm not opposed to also hearing the argument for just drafting another center like Owen Beck, who's just solid prospect depth too. It feels like it allows more flexibility for the Canadians. Here's what I would do. Honestly, if you've got Shane Wright, you've picked Shane Wright, right? You've got your one-two center punch. And that to me means now you have to fill out the rest of your roster as you see it two to three years from now, right? Your number one overall pick is going to be ready much sooner than whoever you pick a little bit later, particularly at 26 or 33. I think you got to go for a defenseman. I think that's what you have to do because unless, unless you don't see anybody who has the potential to either push Caden Gooley to number one or accompany Caden Gooley as number one, then you go for a winger. I don't think the Canadians have an abundance of talented wingers by any means, but I'm thinking that if you are missing a piece, if you're expecting to contend for years and you're missing key pieces, it's not going to happen for you. Look at Colorado, look at Tampa Bay, look at the teams that are on their, like on their, what do you call on their heels that are getting better. They all have all the components. They have the depth. So that's what I want is that you need your core. You need your structure. Now, I know other people will disagree with me and they'll say, just take BPA, whoever the BPA is. I I generally do believe in that philosophy. But if you see somebody who is a defenseman, who's good enough to either push Kane Gooley or be Kane Gooley or be the number one, sorry, alongside him, then that's your no brainer because then your wingers, you've got some other wingers, and then you've got some people you can kind of develop, some people who are going to be unexpected, like maybe they pick them in the fifth round and they like light up the QMJHL again. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> like, you know? So that that's that's what I would do if you've picked Shane Wright. I, I do like that idea because I'm looking here and I'm looking at defensemen available, you know, starting at 26th and going down. And this is in uh a uh, an article that someone else is working at eyes on the prize and I have access to this spreadsheet because I uh, am a draft expert that I play on TV and there's names like Owen Pickering, uh, Ryan Chesley, Leon Bichelle, Kelly Odelius, who I believe it was uh, Tony Ferrari mentioned is someone uh, that he really liked. There's a lot of defensemen in that range. And like you said, yes, there are a lot of prospect defensemen now and some people might push Caden Gooley, but behind that, in the prospect pool, you have Logan Mayu, who is in London and is coming off shoulder surgery. You have Jaden Struble, who has one more year in the NCAA. And you have William Trudeau playing in the QMJHL. Refresh that pool a little bit. It's like we're talking about with centers and stuff. A lot of these guys are going to graduate. He goes, look at all these prospects. They're no longer prospects in a year and a half, two years from now when they're in the professional ranks. They're prospects in that sense, but not non-professional prospects so i actually like that idea and i'm open to that in a big way and when we get to our third segment we talk about trading up that's where i that's kind of where my mindset was spoiler alert um and we will get all of that coming up in a second but coming up in our next segment on the other side of the coin what happens if the montreal canadians take europe slavkovsky first overall instead of shane wright we're going to break down what we think they should do in that case and that's all coming up next But first, today's show is brought to you by our wonderful folks at Rock Auto. There are so many makes and models of your car. It can be intimidating. It can be pointless. And it's just stressful to have to go into a chain store, find what you're looking for, and pay so much more for even simple things. And if you go to rockauto.com, you can save 30, 50, even 100% more on all the parts your car will need. And you can do it from the comfort of your own couch on your laptop or on your phone All you have to do is go to rockauto.com and they have reliably low prices for every customer, whether you're fixing, you know, your classic muscle car or you just need to fix part of the minivan, they've got what you're looking for. So go explore their easy to use website and find all the solutions to your auto parts needs. And when you're done, you've checked out, you save yourself a little bit of money, maybe buy some built bars with that extra money. 
You can write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, so we talked about what happens if the Canadians make the right choice and pick Shane Wright, no pun intended. If they go... How do you really feel, Scott? I'm so tired of the debate. I'm so tired, but that is... (laughs) That is a rant for draft weekend when this is all over with, and I have had a nice glass of scotch, and we have sat down to record the post-draft show. But that is a story for another day. If they go off board and pick Yurov Slavkovsky, the big Slovak winger, at first overall, my thought is, and I'm going to plant my flag in the ground on this, they have to draft a center at 26th overall. Their center depth is a weakness in this organization right now. Yes, Nick Suzuki is amazing. We know Christian Dvorak is a solid NHL player. Jake Evans is a good everyday player. But you do not have a high-end center prospect that is ready to make a jump right now. There are Or in a year. Or in a year, and that's the thing. It, it's, it makes too much sense to pick the center because it's best player available, at least by most of the guys at this point in the consensus ranking, And it fits a need for your franchise. If you do not pick a center first overall, you need to make sure you have a plan to acquire several of them in this draft. And luckily for the Canadians at the end of round one, the name I've had my eye on here, if they are not picking right first overall, is Owen Beck from Mississauga. He is not the flashiest player, but he's a very solid two-way centerman. He, He does all the little things that coaches love. He doesn't have the high-end sizzle and pizzazz that I think some of the other players do. And one of the other names from Sudbury is, and I'm going to potentially mispronounce this, is David Goyette is a name that I really, really like. He, he, uh, Scott Wheeler of The Athletic wrote a really nice profile on him. And when I was just kind of casually watching some of the OHL games, Goyette was one of the Wolves' best players. But I know there might be good defensemen. There might be great wingers available. If you are picking Slavkovsky first overall, you have got to find a way to shore up the center depth. And I don't know if free agency or trading for an NHL player is the way to do that when you're rebuilding. I say you take right first overall and not worry about it. But in the world, which we might be seeing soon, you got to get a center. And I, I don't think I can be swayed from that viewpoint right now. I am 100% in agreement with you. And the thing that I think is key here is that the Canadians have an opportunity to go off the board. They might take it. We don't know. There's reports that that's what they've decided to do. I saw a comment on Reddit the other day that was like, I can't wait to the draft because if they pick Slavkovsky, I'm going to come back here and read all the comments. And I think as a fan base, that's kind of what we've been, it's what we deserve. I think it would be interesting to go off the board and get a flashy winger 100%. But if you do that, your center depth is basically a guy who's 26 years old, who's still going to be good in four to five years, but is not going to be good for the entire time that Cole Caulfield is good, that Nick Suzuki is good, that Romanov is good, that Caden Gooley is good. You need somebody that's going to grow with them and be part of that core. We're talking like a Tampa. We're talking talking, um, a, a Colorado. So when you want that, you have to take a center. And at this point, if you've got Nick Suzuki now, who will be solidified in that number one center spot because now you have no choice right like when you have Shane Wright and Nick Suzuki you've got a one-two punch and they both kind of do similar things in in that they control the game they slow down the game they're very good defensively they're very good offensively they make the the people around them better they kind of play at the same pace so you know who knows who's going to end up being better out of both of those two guys but you have a good one-two punch you pick Slavkovsky, you don't have that anymore. So you really, really need to have somebody that is good enough to be your number two because for too long, your number one center has been somebody that's a 2-3, right? If you get another 2-3, it better be a good 2-3. It better be somebody who's going to play behind Nick Suzuki. And I look at picking Slavkovsky and maybe they think they're further along in their rebuild than where they started with an internal review or they're going to be going hard after a free agent center and which doesn't quite fit the MO of what a rebuilding team is. They are not, you know, we are this piece away from being back in the playoffs. They are several pieces away and several trades away 
there's plenty of smoke around Jeff Petrie and Josh Anderson and more on him in a little bit here. But if they're picking Slavkovsky, my thought is either they have an internal candidate that they really like or they have something planned for moving up there. And this is not to slander Euro Slavkovsky because we've had Tony Ferrari on. We've had Russ Cohen on. We have had Brian ba- or Byron Bader on. My apologies. We've had scouting on. And they've all said the same thing is that Euro Slavkovsky is a very talented player. But if you are the Montreal Canadiens, that Laura and I are running the Montreal Canadiens and we're doing a fantastic job. Please do not tweet mean things at us. Slavkovsky does not fit what the team needs right now. If this was a team that, you know, finished seventh or eighth, you know, last and somehow was able to move up in the draft and he was there, hell yeah, you go for it kind of thing. It, we talked about in the first segment, it, you're running a lot of risks then in taking Slavkovsky and that you're hoping that can he capture that entire international form in regular season play? Can he adjust to the NHL and work out those flaws? And then can you get the center that your team desperately needs to? You're putting a lot up to chance there and that you think if I do this and this team does this and this team does this, this will fall right into my lap and it's everything I hope for. Or I have to give up so much to go get one of these pieces that I want now. It becomes a lot riskier. And not that I think Kent Hughes and uh, Jeff Gordon and their company and all their scouts and everything won't take risks. And I do think they will. They, I think they've proven that they're willing to take those chances the first overall pick is not that time, I think. And I don't think they're going to trade down. There'd be so many boos in Montreal if they trade down unless they get a haul for it. But my final stake in that, and I, and I know Laura agrees with me, that if you were picking Slavkovsky, unless someone like a Minchukov, a mate Chuck, um, falls down, you have to pick a center at 26th overall. And probably again at 33rd overall too. And it kind of limits what you can do with those high impact draft picks there. Speaking of high impact, Josh Anderson's name has been in trade rumors since Pierre Lebrun mentioned that teams were calling the Canadians uh, for the Canadians big power forward. What if they trade him at the draft and want to move up? We're going to discuss what that does and how that impacts the Canadians draft. And that's all coming up next. But first betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Get all the latest development, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL Stanley Cup Final, Major League Baseball is in full swing, and they're your continued source for all your live betting, esports, and your scores. And they have everything you're looking for for MMA, boxing, golf. Find what you are looking for at betonline.net. Head to their website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, so we're going to address the power horse in the room here. And with the caveat that Laura and I are not saying that this is a move that we would do. But it's been about a month now since Pierre Lebrun mentioned that teams called Kent Hughes leading up to the trade deadline and they wanted Josh Anderson. And I get it. He's handsome. He's very good at scoring goals. He's fast. He's physical. He- annoys the Leafs. That's big. He annoys the Leafs. Don't forget that part. (laughs) I could never forget that part. Uh, Twitter would never let me. And a lot of people have taken that as, ah, the Habs are going to trade him. They're going to trade him. No, stop that Devils fans. And I look at this as if they are going to do this, it is to move up because there is someone in that I want, I'm going to, say it's in that top 15 range there, anywhere from 12 to 17, give or take, that has any number of names who could be in there. And if they're going to trade up into that situation, my biggest thought is it has the biggest opportunity for them to diversify their portfolio of prospects because I have the thing pulled up here. You have Minchukov, Kevin Korchinski, Denton Mate, Chuck, if you're looking for defensemen, Brad Lambert could be there, Marco Casper, uh, Connor Geeky, who we talked to, I believe it was Tony Ferrari about, you know, a big rugged center there. But you have Rutger McGrody, Isaac Howard, Jagger Furcus, and all these names. There's so many people that could fall in that range there that could make it appealing for the Canadians. They are going rebuild, like scorched earth rebuild. Shedding Anderson's contract and moving up gives them more assets. 
another high end draft pick. I assume they would be trading 26 Anderson and to move up because that's how trading up in the draft works. Unless they found a truly, truly desperate GM for Josh Anderson's talents, in which case then who then now we're cooking with gas to have a first, a middle and an end and beginning of second round pick here. I, I think this is the one where I look at it and I go, I go defenseman if, depending on who's on the board here, if they move up, because I love Pavel Minchukov. I, I love him a lot as a player. He reminds me of a very young Eric Carlson, and the Canadians don't have one of those, to be quite honest, right now. The opportunity's there that if they get a good enough offer, I think, you know, you trade up and you you you, you lose Josh Anderson and you feel sad about it, but... It's part of the rebuild. <laughs> but you get over it. Um, that's the thing that I was thinking is that if you have an Eric Carlson type player. Now, I hate, you know, player comparisons. Russ Cohen doesn't like doing player comparisons. But I'm just saying somebody who brings a skill set in that milieu, right? Not necessarily as good as uh, Eric Carlson is prime or anything like that. But if you've got somebody with that set of skills, imagine playing that person with Kate and Gooley. Imagine this, like in 2025 right it, that's the thing that gets me is we talked about in our Shea Weber episode how they never insulated him with a player who played off of what he needed a puck mover Pavel Minchikov is that guy he's a rover he's he's a defenseman in name only it when when he plays out there for Saginaw it is three forwards a defenseman and Pavel Minchikov playing wherever the heck he feels like in the ice there. I, I'm i curious to see what teams are desperately calling for Josh Anderson's talents because I believe the Oilers would definitely be one of them. I think Josh Anderson playing on a line with McDavid would be terrifying. I think a team like LA, Mark Bergevin is out there. I don't know how wide his influence goes in that organization, but I do fully believe that there are teams that are calling for Josh Anderson's talents. I am not shocked by that, and I'm not saying the Canadians are going to do it. Clearly, the team loves him. He was here for F1 weekend for the Grand Prix. They designed hats for Tree Cola Ray Sports, which I cannot wait to see what they came up with for this because I don't need to spend more money, but I'm going to spend more money on hats. But I also look at this from an analytic viewpoint, and I go, you have any number of players in any number of positions that if you trade up and you end up in the middle of the first round as well, you can do some serious damage knocking off if you have a checklist of things that you need. There are centers, there are wingers, there are defensemen, there are defensive defensemen, there are offensive defensemen, there are shutdown centers, there are big centers, there are little centers. There is one fish, there's two fish, there's red fish, there's blue fish. It becomes kid in a candy store for if you're Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon here. I, I, I wasn't in favor of it, but like... Once we get an idea of what some of these teams might be, we also don't know what's coming in a potential Jeff Petrie trade here shortly. But if they were to trade Josh Anderson, you can't go wrong with any of the selections there unless you pick a goalie, in which case then I wonder how desperate you are or how bad Carey Price's injury is that you are drafting a goalie in the middle of the first round when I don't have one rated here inside the top. Oh, God, I haven't found a goalie yet. It's the, a while. The, 76th so overall it's 76th overall is the top rated goalie that i found on this chart not the best sign in the world but um i've been monopolizing this entire segment so i'm sorry laura like are you leaning one way or the other or are you just going hey you pick whatever really fun player is in that time is in that frame there so I'm simply assuming that it's going to be Josh Anderson plus the 26th plus something like a throw in, right? I don't think that if there's a player the Canadians really want and other GMs are sensing it, they're going to be like, all right, we want Josh Anderson plus, right? So I'm assuming that 26th pick is no longer there. So you have an opportunity because in that top 15 range, there's always somebody who's a good defenseman that's going to be a little bit more of a project, but can turn into something big, right? I'm assuming that Brad Lambert will be available because GMs don't like him. Some of our commenters don't love him. I personally think that that's, that's a way they can go. Uh, but if they are in that range, again, I would go defenseman. It's really funny because I was like, defenseman, staunchly in the first one, I was like, defenseman, defenseman. And then this time I'm like, whoever is the most 
dynamic out of all of those. But if there's a defenseman that you're looking at and you're like, this guy could be in our top pairing and we've already, like, we're already penciling Caden Gooley in, in that top two. We've got somebody who needs to play with him, right? And we've talked on previous episodes about how the Canadians have great depth in the two to seven for in terms of prospects, in terms of like, you know, Justin Barron, Jordan Harris. There's guys that we, we are excited about, but none of them has kind of stood out as being a number one guy. And for everybody who responds every time we say this, they say Logan Mayu has the talent to be that number one guy. Every scout we've talked to say he's got great hands, great skating, terrible decision making. That's not somebody you can count on to be your number one guy. So we're assuming that they need a number one guy. If they find somebody who can play alongside, so maybe they're not like a looking at it right now, sure shot number one guy, but put together with Caden Gooley, they become one of the top pairings in the league. That's what I would be leaning towards if I'm the Canadians. However, if there's like a really dynamic winger there, grab him because Again, it's going to be a little bit more of a project, but still somebody who's good enough to make the NHL, still somebody who five or six years from now we can get really excited about. You you take the risk at that point. If you get this many cracks at the apple, you're allowed to take risks. If it shows that you're trying to, you know, really, you know, go for the fences here. You could go and be like, I moved up and I took the safe option. Okay, that's fine. You know. I go back to the Ryan Paling draft. There were, you know, some truly, and even Caden Goulian. We were very wrong about Caden Gooley's ceiling so far. He's impressed us a lot. There were higher risk pieces, higher offensive ceiling, but potentially not going to reach that floor. Caden Gooley was always going to reach his floor and could grow from there. And he's done that. Some of these other guys, maybe not, uh, at least not yet anyways, but they might. And I think if you trade up, you go for you go for the you swing for the fences, take the risk, and that's the best way to do that. Um, we want to know what you do if the Canadians are picking Shane Wright. What are you doing at the end of round one? They're picking Slavkovsky. What are you doing at the end of round one? If they trade Josh Anderson, what are you doing when you're stopped crying and sobbing like I will? If there's options, and it's really fun to think about it because the world is their oyster for the most part here. And if you love draft prospects, we've got some really fun news to announce coming up here at the end of this week. There will be a bonus episode this weekend. We won't tell you who's going to be on them. Just keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. And it's a first for both Laura and myself on this show. So we are very excited to bring that to you. As always, thank you for making us your first listen or your first watch of the day. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. If you want to send us any emails, questions and stuff, we're going to move the mailbag to next Monday, uh, just because we have some stuff planned that's taking precedence right now. Lockdowncanadians at gmail.com. Follow Laura at The Active Stick. Follow myself at Scott Matla. And when you're done listening to us, please check out Lockdown NHL. They've got all your Stanley Cup final news, all your draft news, everything from all of our local experts, all in one place. They're great, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We will be back with a very special Caden Gooley themed episode tomorrow, and we will see you all then.